So this is Plex TV running on my second generation Fire TV Cube. We can see all of my content in here. I can click on something, get amazing artwork, get to see the film summary, and of course I can watch that. Let's put that down. Let's have a look at my Fire Stick. Now on my 4K Fire Stick, I'm actually using the official Plex add-on for the care application. Now there really are just so many benefits of using the official add-on versus the native application. But if I just start that up, and here we can see all of my content is available again. I can click on something, see all the great information, and start enjoying all of this fantastic content. Let's put that down. And lastly, here is all of my Plex content being accessed from my smartphone. So pretty much everything I can do on my Fire Stick, I can now access all of that wherever I am. Now, all of these devices are connecting to a Plex server. And where is my Plex server? Well, I'm actually using my Nvidia Shield Pro as a Plex server. So let me go to that now. And here is my NVIDIA Shield Pro acting as the Plex media server. So this is basically hosting all of my content, which I can now access from my Fire Stick, Fire TV Cube, cell phone, even a normal browser I can use and access all of the content that I'm now sharing. So in this video today, let me give you a super quick guide on how you can also set up a Plex media server in your house and get access to all of your great content across all of your devices wherever you are. So with all of that being said, let's get started. If you're new to the channel and you want to stay up to date with the latest tech tutorials, the latest Fire Stick, Android and Android TV tips and tricks, then please do subscribe and hit the notification bell. It's a small click from you, but it makes a big difference to me. Thank you. Okay, so I'm gonna try my best to make this video as simple as possible. Um, you can do a lot with Plex. There are some advanced configuration options, but really I'm looking to give you guys the easiest way you can get Plex up and running in your house. So but if you guys are interested in it in a more advanced tutorial, then please do leave me that comment below. Okay, so what is Plex? So Plex is a free media streaming software service that you can download on your device and start sharing out your content with other devices on your home network. And you can also share out your media to remote devices, you know, to your cell phone, for example, if you pay for that service. Um, if, if you don't want to pay for anything, you can use Plex absolutely free and stream anything to any device in your house. Now, there are two components to this. You have the Plex media server, and then you have the Plex client. So the Plex media server's job is to catalog, to organize, to basically present your content in a nice way that you can then access using the Plex clients. And we can see here that the Plex media server is available for Windows, for Linux, for Macintosh. And also if you have a NAS device, lots of those actually come with the Plex media software or the media server software built in. Now in my example, I'm going to use the Nvidia Shield as my media server, but as you can see here guys, there really are just so many options for you to use. So that's the media server, and then we have the actual media client. So here we can just see there's clients for pretty much every device under the sun. So everything from your Fire TV to your Android TV device, uh, to your K application, uh, to your Oculus Go, to your PlayStation. So they really have made a client for pretty much every device under the sun. Now the key thing in all of this is your actual content where is your actual content? Is it on a USB drive? Is it on a NAS? Is it on your computer? Wherever that content is, we need to get the Plex media server to access that content so you can then share that out to the rest of your network. Now one big, or should I say massive benefit of using the Plex add-on via the K application is the fact that, well, let's just say to this day and today is April, 2020, I would still say that the K application is hands down by far the best media player. It just literally just plays everything flawlessly. Yes, VLC is good. Yes, MX player is good. But overall, I would say without a doubt, the K application is definitely, for me anyway, the best media player out there. And if you use this add-on, it just plays everything from your Plex library without any kind of transcoding or any kind of changing whatsoever. Whereas if you use the official Plex application, depending on how your videos are encoded, you know, what codecs they're using, what format they're in, there may be cases where the Plex official application will not be able to play them and then it will ask your Plex media server to transcode it. Transcoding means your Plex media server is going to convert your video that you click on on the fly into another format that your Plex client can actually use. So, and as you can imagine, that does cause load onto your Plex media server and also takes time to do. But again, it does depend on your source content. So if your source content is in a supported format, then you can play it without any issue. If it's in an unsupported format, it's going to transcode it 
unless you use the Plex add-on for the CAP application where I've never seen any kind of transcoding and everything just plays first time. So they're the main components of your Plex media setup. Now for the sake of simplicity, I'm going to say that all of my media is on a USB drive. Now this is only a small 32 gig drive, but of course you could have your media onto a four terabyte or wherever your hard drive is. So you can plug that directly into your Nvidia Shield or wherever else on your home network that the Nvidia Shield can access. Like for example, some routers or routers actually have a USB port. So any USB drive you plug into that port can now be accessed from any device on your home network, including your Plex media server. So that's enough of the background regarding Plex. Let's now go ahead and create that free account. So on the Plex website, let's go to sign in. And here you can sign in with your Google account or your Facebook account or your Apple account. But in my example, I've just registered with an email address and my password. Let's now sign in. Okay, so I've now logged in let's click on launch okay and here is the plex home screen now in case you're wondering all of the media that we see here is actually freely available via plex so this is not my media this is just some of the free content that's available on plex tv and here we can just see on my usb drive i have two folders one for my movies and we can see some of the stuff that i've uh, previously purchased over here and I have another one for just some random TV shows. I mean, this is just for an example. So that's all of my content. Let's now plug this into my shield and we can now start sharing out this content. Okay, so back on my shield, I'm going to sign into the Plex application using that new account that I just created. So if I start the Plex application and click on sign in, and it then gives me this code that I can use on the browser to link my new Plex account with my Nvidia shield. So let's jump back over to my browser and the code is 19kh. Okay, so here I'm on my browser. So this is where I'm already logged in with my new Plex account. Let's now type in that code. So 19kh, let's click on link. Okay, so we get the message that the account is now linked. Let's go back on my shield. And here we can just see I've logged into the Plex client for the first time. The only two things that are left are we need to plug in that USB drive, which has all of my content. And then we need to actually install the Plex media server. So let's do that now. Okay, so here is a USB drive with those two folders with my media content. Let's now plug this directly into my shield. Uh, let's see if I can do that without looking. Okay, can that go in there? Yes, it can. Okay, so that's now gone in. Okay, so on your NVIDIA shield, install the Plex media server directly from the Google Play Store. Once that's finished installing, let's go back to normal Plex. And this just confirms that it can now see that we've installed the Plex media server. We have the option here to enable the Plex media server. Let's click on next. You have the option for default libraries. Let's leave that as default. Click on next. Click on next again. Let's give that permission. Click on next. And that should now start that service for the first time. And just while we're waiting guys, if you are enjoying these kind of tutorials, if you want to see more tutorials for the Nvidia Shield or the Fire TV Cube or the 4K Fire Stick, then please do like this video and also think about subscribing because that really is the best way to help out my channel. Thank you. And we then get this final message saying that the Plex media server has now been fully configured for your Nvidia Shield. Let's click on finish. And that's all of the configuration we need to do here. Let's now jump back onto my PC so we can now share the content on the USB drive that we plugged into our Shield. Okay, so back on the Plex TV website, let's now click on refresh on this page. And let's see if it actually detects the media server, the Plex media server we have now running on our home network. Let's give that a second. Okay, we get this message here. Let's click on got it. And that's it guys. When you see that message that we found a server, you're pretty much uh, almost at the end of this uh, process. So let's leave the default name as is. Now we do have an option here that if you want to access your Plex media library from outside your internal network, you can leave this option enabled and this will then try to configure your home network so you can access your Plex library externally. The only thing to mention here is that if you do want to use the mobile application, there is a one-time fee of a couple of dollars or a couple of pounds for that. But for now, let's click on next. Okay, so here we have some default libraries. Um, in fact, let's just actually tweak some of these. So let's take off my home videos. I don't want to use those. I'm not gonna have music on here, let's take that off. All photos. So all we left is just two media libraries, a movies library and a TV shows library. If I now click on edit, we can see it then asks us, where is the content for this library? So if I click on add folders, and I can now click on browse for media folder, and this will now show you your internal storage of your Nvidia Shield. And here we can just see some of those folders like downloader, like, Aurora and Android and so on and so forth. But in our example, because we're saying that our media is on our USB drive, I can also see that here as well. So let's click on that. And I can now see my movies and my TV shows folder. So in this example, because this is the movies folder, I'm gonna click on movies. 
and click on add. So this will now bind or associate the movies folder of that library with the movies folder of my USB drive. Let's click on save changes. And let's now also do the same thing for TV shows. So click on edit, go to add folders, browse for media folder. Let's once again find our USB drive and then find the TV shows folder and click on add and click on save changes. Okay, so we've just configured two of our media libraries. Let's click on next and let's click on done. And this will now basically start scanning the content of my USB drive and any of the content it can find against the IMDB or the different online uh, movie databases. And this will then pull down the metadata and the artwork and all the relevant information for the movies and TV shows it finds. And if we look on the top left here, we can see there the two media libraries. Let's click on the first one. And we can see there guys, so it's now automatically found all of the content on our USB drive. We now get to see the artwork. We get to see the information about who starred in the film. And of course I can now just click on play. And this will now instantly start streaming that from my USB drive through the shield onto my computer over here. Now let's back out of that. Well, because that's working absolutely fine guys. So let's now jump over to our Fire Stick and let's see we want to now access this content from another device. Okay, so on our 4K Fire Stick, let's quickly install Plex. Let's open that up. Let's click on that. So as mentioned, there are two ways to do this on a Fire Stick or really any Android device. Either you can use the official Plex application and if that works for most of your content, then that's great. If you do find that your content is constantly being transcoded, then I would advise actually installing the official add-on via the K application. But for now, let's open this up. Let's just sign in. And this really is the beauty of how Plex works, that you can have your content in one place, then how many devices you have in the house, how many Fire Sticks, how many Nvidia Shields, how many Android boxes. You don't have to mess about with any kind of manual configuration. Just install the Plex application, link it up to your account, and within a couple of seconds, as we can see now, what should I say, five, four, three, two, one. And there we go, guys. I can now go to Movies. And this is all of the content that's being served from my USB drive through the NVIDIA Shield and now presented on my Fire Stick. I can now click on something. I can see all of the content in there, all the information, all of the reviews, uh, who stars in that film. I can now click on play. And again, within a couple of seconds, that should now start streaming directly onto my 4K Fire Stick. And we can see it's done exactly that. Okay, let's back out of that and all of the artwork, all of the metadata for all of this content has worked straight away. So that's how you access content using the official Plex application. Let me now lastly show you how you can configure that add-on via the K application. So let's back out of this, let's open this up. Let's go to settings. Let's go to this one here. Click on this option, scroll down. So you don't need to install any kind of manual repos. The Plex official add-on is actually available via the official K application repository so just go down to video add-ons scroll down and we'll see there is an official add-on under p for plex let's click on that and click on install and click on ok i'm actually wondering how long this video is going to be now because i did try my best to make it um, as quick as possible but sometimes um, i do get carried away with the explanations okay, let's open that up and click on run okay once again we can just click on sign in there's the code there. Let me go back to my browser window. Let's also type in this code. So that's 7YXC. Now within a couple of seconds, once again, we are now accessing my library, but this time via an official add-on. So I can now click on something here. We can see this is laid out slightly differently, but all of the content is there. And once again, I can click on play. And within a couple of seconds, that should now start playing on my device and it says working great. In fact, let's try folding that bit and that's working great. Okay, let's back out of that. Well, that's all for this video, guys. Many thanks for watching and many thanks for staying till the end. If you did find this video useful, then do give it a thumbs up. Uh, do let me apologize if the video was a little bit long, but I did try my best to cover all of the angles. If you have any questions about Plex, then do leave me a comment below. Other than that, I hope everybody is staying safe, staying indoors. Do let me know what you think about Plex and I'll hopefully catch up with you guys real soon. Thanks.